All right, so let's continue where we left off. Um, I did a couple things off camera, of course. Um, I was waiting for this to upload, so I went ahead and just sanded those out real quick. Of course, they go down a little bit, which I don't really care. Not a big deal. Um, not looking for perfection on this bed. But it'll just kind of get it rid of the line. See how it looks. I'll put a little primer on there for you. I'm not going to use this primer. I'm just going to, for the whole thing, I'm just going to shoot a little on here so you can see. Of course, after this, you always end up priming again and block sanding. Whatever. Clear out that tip real quick. Hang on. Little chunky monkey there. Yeah, you'll still see it, but it won't look terrible, right? You know, once it gets blocked again, that's always hide a little bit more. You hide more with blocking actually does most of your body work, really. The guy who's really good at blocking can make a lot of stuff look good. So that's how that looks there. You can kind of get an idea. You'll still see it, but it won't look terrible once I get it. That sanded that I just put on there and then a heavier coat of primer on that and I'll finish sanding all these out do those the same way again the reason is is I want it to be sealed I didn't really care if I had a seam there or not I just didn't want it to be an open area for water to get in some probes at some point so it's an improvement over the original I can see I've got access now to this so I'll just grind this down. You can see I kind of got a little shady on my, where I left the other piece of metal on there. I got a little bit too far overlapped, so in a few places, probably why it didn't go up tight. So I'll just bring it back a bit. Yeah, I'll probably make it, bring it back an eighth or so, and then I'll probably have to notch them out where I put the brackets, which I think they probably did that um, in... Because like I said, that part of it was pretty rusty. It's weird. This part right in here had a rust hole. Okay. But there was no rust holes along here. So it makes me think that maybe that was um, notched out. And then the water got between the two layers right here. So I don't know. <clears throat> maybe I'll, when I get done, I'll grind that out and then weld the edge. Something like that. Hopefully it works out because <clears throat> I don't want it to be too ugly, but I might do that. I'll think, I'm going to think about that and before I paint it, maybe. be a good idea. Either that or do it after I paint it and then touch it up. Be kind of a pain when I weld after I paint, you know. Probably burn out some of the area pretty good and I'll have to really touch it. A little more work that way. So i got to think about that first. But I'm not really sure where that bracket goes, if it's on this part or that part. And dragging this truck and putting it underneath that lift and setting it back on there. <laughs> that's a lot of work. It's really hard to do. It's not that easy. Especially when a lift isn't totally restored yet. So when the lift is restored, it won't be as hard. Because the hydraulics will take it on and off. But still kind of a pretty good sized job. You got the things that go underneath are on there and all that. And you take all those off and then you raise the lift up. And then lock it. So the hydraulics are locked in place. Hopefully they don't leak down. And then I hook the hydraulic lines and the lift, the truck drives out from underneath the lift. So the they were made. So anyway, that'd be kind of cool because that's actually legal to drive. You could drive that, you know, as a, you wouldn't have to go through the scales because it's a, it's a, uh, it's not permanently attached. So cool. All right, let's move on with, uh, Getting this thing done, and I think we'll put on that piece. I've got it sitting inside the truck there, and uh, get that thing put on. I'm not sure. Today's no rain today, so maybe I should just take the doors off and then sand the outsides of them and get those filled in. I'm not sure. Tomorrow and the next day is supposed to rain, so still weighing that out. I don't know. We'll see what we get in this video. Talk to you guys later on.
This is this is not the first even after the first blocking or anything this is just to show you guys see how it looks uh, I'm gonna do a lot more to it still but I did you a baseline there still need to do some there's some pity guys in the corner a little stuff here it's wavy and it's gonna take some hand work and I just wanted to get the bulk of that taken care of uh, before I put on the other panel and which I can I mean I'm not gonna do that much more to it really just a little bit because um, I'm not looking to get that part looking perfect a lot of the stuff I'm you know edges and corners I'm not going after real perfect stuff 
So I'm just going to try and make it look straight and not wavy. You know, that's the main thing. But I'll get all the little stuff out of it, you know, stuff that, that I want to get out of it and some stuff I'm going to leave. See how this thing looks. This tip is not too plugged. In. Not bad. I want to work on that. Won't take much. Fix the holes up. Put the bolts in there. That's what I had in it. Bolts and washers. All right, so looks like we're about ready to put this uh, piece on here. Let's take a look here. So yeah, I've got a lot of this stuff ready. Got this thing on here. first and then hook it on the other side and bring it back in all right so I'm just gonna check a couple things it looks like it's on there all right Push it in, drill it. I think I'm gonna drill this one and just weld it from this side. So I'll mark off some spots. Make sure I can fold that thing over. You can't reach quite in here, it's a little bit taller. The way I'll fit it on a little bit better, see if I get it on there real nice and then. It's not bad, it fits pretty good. There's like the bottom edge, there's a little bit, it's a little bit high on there, or the bed's just a little bit low, but I don't care. Well, that's it, I can't really figure anything else to do because I put seam sealer on there between the layers. I thought about that, or uh, panel adhesive, I think. I'd have problems trying to weld it, so I guess I'll just weld it and then stick some seam sealer in there as best I can. Yes, it's gonna try and reach over the edge and put it on the inside of that, the top of the green panel, just with my finger, I guess, after I get it all done. Try and keep water from going into that area from the outside. That's about all you can do, really. Yep. I'll just weld it in.
This is going to make it. I ground this down a little bit to see, make sure it's not going to wrap in the wrong place. Well, I can always bend it out, I guess. And hate to do that, but. All right, let's look at that edge there. Yeah, looks pretty good. Get you guys up a little closer. Let's get it up here. Yeah, it's just gotta be hand pounded in a couple spots. I can even take a pair of pliers and probably crimp that down. Yeah, that helps. You guys can see. I'll try it with these. Oh, these might work pretty good. A little mark on this side, but I gotta fill those welds anyway. It's gonna fill that in with some stuff, but I want this to look pretty good. Just gonna crimp it down with this and then I'll hammer doll it the rest of the way. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Good guess on my angles there. Not bad. That will work. Let's see if I can widen you guys up. Let me turn this off. And you can see the whole thing. Cool. Alright, I got the whole thing to do. Okay. Looks like fun. All right, so I'm going to put you guys at this angle so you can kind of see. Let's see if I can get it just up just a little bit more right there, huh? And then I'll go on the other side here. And you can see how this thing works. It is loud. 
Watch here so I don't get the volume turned down. Doing it's the first angle, and you kind of got to feather it. Get the first angle, then you do the second one. Time so I can get a little tighter. It's not easy on the body, but it does a nice job. There you go, you can see that, I think. On this side, it's a little too wide for the gap. I tried folding it right now, it would hit the metal, it would kind of curl, not look very good. So i it down. All right, guys, it's pretty damn cold out right now. It's in the 40s somewhere. It's heading down to 30s, I think. But uh got my big-time heater in here. <laughs> it works good because this room's insulated, but it takes a while for it to cool down or warm up. Um, but I've got this thing on here. You know, I, I'm going to say this because there's a lot of people that still think that you know, if you lap something, it's it's not a good repair. The rust gets between the two layers. What do you think happens right here? <laughs> Original factory between these layers here. You know, there's a lot of places, you know, where you can't, they say, well, I'll put wet through primer. You can try all kinds of stuff. It's still, you're going to have exposed metal between these two surfaces. Between there, there's, you've got to clean the metal to weld it, right? So you're going to have exposed metal, you know, some places and it still lasts. You know, whenever I do stuff like this, it works. It, it lasts for a long time. Um, and then when I get done, I'm going to seam seal the bottom. I'm going to run a bead of seam sealer for sure on that to make sure that nothing gets in there because that's where the problem can be. Water sitting on there, it can just weak, work its way up. So it got to be really well seam sealed. And they weren't from the factory, so that's why they rusted so badly. A lot of them did. You know, and some of them, you see, some of them don't rust because they're not, they're treated different. Or they're in a place where it's not constantly wet all the time. Like back east, when they're just outside, they could just be wet all the time. And water finds its way up there. So, does it, when you get between, when you have stuff that's not butt welded, like on the roof, one of these sections, you know, 
getting moisture between there? Come on. Yeah, it doesn't happen. I mean, it could over some period of time. I mean, it could anywhere on the whole car. So why does your repair need to be better than what was on the factory? You know, it's like, I don't know. I understand the whole mentality, but my welding works. Lap welding works. Both of them are good repairs. So, you know, let's keep moving on. Just like throw that in there for those people who just haven't learned yet. It, it all works. Well, I got these off. I was going to go ahead and sand them down and prime them. It was like clear a few minutes ago. Then all of a sudden, this happened. Yeah, not so clear. This big cloud came from that way. I was looking over that way and it was clear. And all of a sudden, this cloud just came shooting across all kinds of wind and thunder and lightning, maybe. Almost looks like snow. Oh, it is. How about that? Said it was getting cold, but uh, it's actually wet snow coming down. It's not uh, hail, really. Little bitty things. It's kind of a wet snow. Look at that. It's gonna have to turn everything white. Holy crap! This stuff makes the ground slippery, though. <laughs> this isn't snow. You guys back east will be laughing. But uh yeah, it's it's just a it's a it's a heavy you know, wet snow. Not it's not a not ice or it's not hail, that's for sure. It's not bouncing off the ground really. Coming down and kinda of hitting. Crazy. All right, I'd throw that in there. Yeah, I was looking at the mountains are just coated right now. Oh, I'm so tempted to go skiing right now. <laughs> just get my stuff out. I'm not supposed to go skiing anymore. The doctor says, you're not supposed, you, you shouldn't ski. And I'm like, oh man, dude, that's like really bad for me. I need to ski. But uh, I guess the main thing is I can't fall. That's more the issue. He says, if you fall, you know, you could get bleed to death and within minutes, you know. But then there's, that sucks. But anyway, at least I can work on this stuff. So let's keep going. I was going to sand these down, but I don't think I'm going to do it right now. I don't want the dust in here. So I'll just work on welding all that up. We'll continue on. I'll let you guys put you guys on the side. Hopefully you guys stick around and watch.
All right, guys. A lot of filler to do here. I'm just gonna lunk it on here. Still got some more welding. I'm realizing this corner here. I was working on this. Got to hit it myself a little bit. But I will come back into that. This is AG47 filler. It's spec to go over uh, even sanded paint. It's pretty good stuff and it's very good for high stress areas. Uh, I think the maximum on all fillers is a quarter inch, but I mean, this stuff would probably handle a little more than that. But they don't spec it for that, so I'm not going to tell you to do it. But I'm not really conscientious about how thick the filler is on this part. I'm just trying to get it to not look like crap. I mean, technically, I should have replaced all this metal. This whole piece here should have gotten replaced, but I wasn't going to go there on this budget. Not happening. I could have easily got into thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars in labor, project price, and materials, or more, on this thing, and I'm just—it's not going to be worth it to me. So it kind of sucks to put it on these corners, man. I'm telling you. So that. The reason I'm using this and not the other auto art stuff, which is you saw the other stuff, I use the yellow stuff. I use that when I have lots of volume. Uh, this sands a little bit slower, but not much different. Sands just a little a smidge slower than that stuff did. But it's really not that much difference. I think this sand, oh, they both sand good was 150. It's really hard to get it. Spread it smooth back here. You can't tell that. Put another coat on there anyway, but I got a lot of it to look pretty uh, okay. It's not going to look great. It's underneath the seat. You know, I, as long as it looks the right shape and it can be wavy as heck down here, I don't really care. As long as it just kind of looks like the right shape and stuff. And then back here, I'm fingering it into those areas, and it'll, you'll see kind of a semi seam there. I'm not going for the perfect seam, original seam look. As long as it's kind of wavy a little bit and looks kind of smooth I'll be good with that I'll bring you guys back in a little bit this filler is going to go off on me I'm going to finger some stuff it takes a little more time let's check it out a little bit later all right we'll just do a little sneak peek here this can needs to be clean again yeah a little edgy Couple heads, coats of primer on there. That's about what I was looking for. Sand it. Put the thicker primer on. I'm just putting this on so you guys can kind of see. Um, let's see. Um, I don't usually just use this stuff. There's some edgy stuff there. And these here are like little pits and stuff. I'm probably going to just leave them. Yeah, once I prime it and I sand it with a heavier primer, that will look pretty good. It's just not going to stand out at you like, like I totally didn't care. I mean, honestly, I don't really care at all. As long as it looks like, doesn't look like crap underneath the seat, that's all I'm looking for. And there's a lot of little stuff here that I just can't see with a... So I'll just go with that for now and just 
still keep going. I still got to sand all this back here. All that right there has got to be sanded some more. Still not quite dry enough. I just did a quick sand on it. I'll let this primer dry a little bit. And uh, there's a lot of welding stuff to do still. I got to make this little corner down here. I got to make that thing. So I'll grind all that out real quick and prep it. Put a piece in there before I get too far along. Got to make that little sucker. I'm probably going to be, I don't know, a week on the inside of this thing. I mean, I got stuff all up in here, all up there underneath the window. The back window looks like all this got to do. I got to clean up. I've been cleaning up. I welded up some of this here, clean up that, and I got to fill all that, the top edge, clean it up with a little finger sander. So it's just a ton of little stuff to do in here. That's why I'm not going to get this like cherry. It'll be good enough. I mean, the seat's going to be in here. Who cares? But I just don't want it to look terrible when you see kind of underneath the seat this mucky mess. You know, I want it to look like, oh, well, it doesn't look like it was that bad. <laughs> we'll make an illusion, right? It wasn't really that bad, right? This thing was terrible. But anyway, I'll finger fill this little crack maybe I'll just use filler on that I guess and then fill all that in I did some filler right here just haven't sanded it yet I had to cut a knife I didn't show that on camera I use that terrible and I forgot to clean it too how about that but I made a little cut a little piece of knife and using that to spread inside there and I got to cut an even smaller one to do up here and then it, it's AG47, so it sands really easy. Sands like, like drywall mud. Really fast sanding, so it's real easy. It's not quite like drywall mud, but pretty, pretty close. Anyway, we'll keep going. All right, I wasn't going to have you guys watch me do all the sanding. It's going to take a long time. I did up in here a bit. Still got to put, like, finger filler in there, in the corners, and up in this corner here. Still working over there. I gotta sand. I gotta sand off all this little bit of surface goopy, rusty stuff. You know, from flash rust, I guess, really what it is. Take the light off up there. And then do the rest of that. You can see right here where I filled that in, and then you can see the dented area down below, down there. Let's zoom in a little more. See right here, filled, and then all the spot welds. From the spot welder, it's got welds in there too, and all kinds of stuff going on. But yeah, I can get it to look pretty good. It just takes a bit of time. It takes a lot of time. It's gonna look nice when it's all done, though. I get all. I'll throw some primer on here in a little bit, and I'll show you where I'm at. Hopefully, but I, you know, like I got to leave this open right now for fixing this. And the tools I'm using real quick are I'm using this. For like, if you guys want to know how to do this stuff, these are good for the grooves. Kind of get a rough idea. I'm using the, I'm using this filler. Um, I use this filler for th some things, and I use this one here, Eurofill Gold from Auto Art, and the others. If I was to choose one, I would choose this one. If I couldn't buy both. But for doing like large bulk areas where I got to do a lot more sanding, this sands just a little bit faster than this one. It doesn't spread as nice as this one does. So if I was going to just choose one, I would take the AG47 over everything I've used so far. And I, I really like this stuff if you can get it cheap enough. Pro Glaze. Uh, I've actually taken this and mixed it with AG47 because they both have similar properties. Because, like, for some things, you know, the AG47 is a little bit too thick, maybe, or it just is not fine enough. And that stuff's a little too thin. So I've mixed them together, and it works really good for a lot of medium fills, stuff like that. You see, that's going to look pretty good. I mean, it's not going to look great. It's just going to look gonna look behind the seat. You won't see, like, big old 
gappy looking weird stuff. It's going to look good. You know, not great, but good. I jumped ahead and ground down areas here and just kind of had some extra filler, so I used that up. I'm going to sand all that. See, I'm going to use the little uh, finger sander, I call it, the little belt sander, and get in there and knock off all the little big stuff. And you could actually sand this right with just by hand very quickly with some 80, really fast, the AG47, a few strokes, and it's down. And then switch to like 150 and finish it out pretty nice, and it'll come out like like you glazed it instead of using filler it comes out like glazing if you notice it's a little bit it doesn't spread quite like um, the glazing does but it works pretty good I mean it's pretty close you can use it as glazing it works great you know it's that fine of a product but the, if you use the glaze mixed with it man it's super great it's really good then so I got to sand this down here and get into that probably bring you guys in a little video here have you guys watch some of this stuff at least We'll see. All right, guys, so we got uh, quite a bit of work done done here, but it's just, it's very slow going inside here. There's a lot more to do still. I think I'm gonna have to do this probably, do this in private once and then probably do it one more time, just block it out and then try and clean it up a little bit. It's just a mess in here, so I got a lot of sanding to do down in there. Hmm. I don't know when I'm gonna do that. I welded up this little hole off camera. I actually made this piece that goes down there. Uh, it was just too complicated to do on camera, so I, I'll tell you how I did it. I just, you can see the shrink marks there. I put it in this hand shrinker. Some guys were asking. You put it in here and then push down this handle, and what that does is it shrinks the metal tighter together and that's what those little teeth marker are there and it shrinks it together after I had an L bend in it so I did all of that bend I bent it like that okay first and then I shrunk it down and what that does is it makes it bend the radius it pulls the metal so it pull, starts pulling the metal on this edge and then makes it so it's a radius so it'll fit down in there it's one of the reasons I said I like I said I bought that for this project because it's just so many things like that i gotta make I mean, you could do the same thing by just cutting slits along here and then just bend it that would work if you didn't have a metal bender or a, or a shrinker so i got to clean that up and weld it stick it in there and i got to make a little piece for the corner all little stuff isn't going to take me that much time but it's just oh it's kind of tedious got this made 
here uh, kind of look at a couple more rust holes up there i don't know what i'm going to do i've treated a lot of this in here but i might just i don't know epoxy putty them even though the rust it's all treated so i shot the final well might be the final coat i think it is i might just go ahead and call it on this uh, on this got the bottom edge remember from beating on the door the bottom edge was a little wavy it wasn't that bad really I just kind of straighten that out mostly with primer a little bit of filler on there still got some wavy stuff going on in here i just whipped over that real quick so i'll probably have to make sure i really block that out check it out really good on the passenger side um, and then what i'm going to do is let these dry then i can flip them over sand them and paint the jams on the inside since the outside's on its last coat of primer I think I could do the rest without, it could maybe use a little spray cannage or something if I have to do anything else to that one. And then just give these a quick guide coat and paint them and get them ready, sand them down and paint this side. But I want to have my final coat of primer on this side so that I can flip it over and paint the jam. So yeah, that's all in. I got this piece in. It's all spot welded along the bottom. Let's take a look at that bottom edge inside again. Again, that's just the first coat of primer. It, you can see it, but it's not bad. Once the seat's in here and stuff, it'll take your eye off of it. It'll look good enough. I mean, yeah, because I did edge weld some of that along the way because it's a lot faster and easier than trying to drill all that. Plus, this is bent down a little bit more than it should be. But that's fine, too, because it's the same all the way across. So it looks good. Uh, the other side, I'm we're still working on. Let's look at that. Got this sand in and vacuuming a lot versus blowing a lot of this stuff, this dusty stuff. And uh, got a lot of this done. I got that part filled. Got a couple little low spots here and there. Maybe I can either sand them a little more or just fill them in again. Then I've got up here, all done. I'm gonna ground that down there i'm going to leave the wire in where it's at uh, i might have already pulled it too far but anyway if i did i'll just rerun it it doesn't matter but um yeah i'll just finish sanding all this and then do another probably another fill coat or two i gotta do a little bit there still i got this all ground down ready for filler yeah, I can get that started. Grind down the bottom, maybe. Clean it. Still got to drill. I got all the holes drilled for the... I think I still have to tap all the holes. I have a little 3.5 millimeter tap to do that with. So I got to do those still. For the cover. So. And then I'm going to... I don't know what I'm going to do with all those patches. <laughs> maybe just throw a little grinder over them and just... Put some filler over them just so they don't look terrible. You'll never see them, but I just might just do it. Just put a little coat of filler on it and make it sand it just a little bit just to kind of make it look a little bit better. I'm not going to make it look, I'm not going to do two coats or anything like that. Just make one coat of primer and then just sand it a little bit and paint it up in, up in those corners and stuff up there. I got to get this one ready too. Get that one ready. I haven't got it done yet. So then I got to do all the floors. Still a lot of more to do. I mean, it's just a ton of little stuff to do inside this cab. This cab will take, you know, I still got to finish that patch. Got to weld something on the other side. I saw, I keep on seeing stuff. And I just, and there's so many little things I haven't been able to film it because I just keep stopping and doing something else, stop and do something else. Stop. And then, you know, before you know it, you kind of made a million circles. So it's hard to film all that, but. That's what's done so far. So yeah, we're about uh, not far. You know, it wouldn't be long before it's painted. I'm gonna sand all this thing down and prime it. Outside of here, I'm gonna sand all this down and prime it. Mm. Anyway, should be ready to go. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Let's see what you guys have to say about this, and we'll just keep making videos on this thing. So I should have one for Monday. Even though my car is not fixed yet, I just put the engine back in it. 
she just did that today um, but I still have to put all the wiring <laughs> exhaust system all that crap it's just it takes weeks probably for me to do because I'll just do it a little bit little so but I'll probably be able to pull off getting another video for you guys this weekend for Monday so we'll see let's hope so talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe